Leo Wardock and Luke Hill once again, and now we're going to do 3D Nan. We're going to do more fervent and rampant speculation. Um, 3D Nan, as it suggests, is memory that goes up. And we've seen this actually with Samsung, I think, for the past two generations of their SSD. Definitely the 850 Evo. Mm, um, and I, yeah. I thought one of the 840s may have, but I might be just completely making that up. But the thing with it is, uh, and the logic is really simple, is do you make um, memory uh, denser, more memory in, a small, in, a, in the same space per chip, or do you simply stack them up and then interconnect them? And as I understand, the interconnecting technology is along the lines of, you basically drill through them and you dump a tube through it, more or less. So it's sort of adding, I mean, it's more complicated than that, but broadly speaking, it's how do you connect this chip up here with that chip there, with that chip there, you go through, and you, cause you can't go around the edges because there's more stuff in the middle. Um, and I've just basically dissed thousands of Samsung engineers <laughs> right there in fact. So I'm going to talk about that at all. <laughs> but uh, so you go up and up and up, and that's how you go from a, uh, a half a terabyte to a one terabyte to a two terabyte SSD in that same form factor. Um, and now Luke's going to give you the correct version of how it all works. We, well, basically, what we've had up until now is. Um, we call it single uh, single chip now, so we haven't been going vertical, it's been more or less 2D. So you're having single chip spread across the PCB. Um, so you've got limitations in regards to capacity there, but vertical, I think the analogy that they use basically is, it's like going from a house to a skyscraper. So in a house you can have a one cell house, a two cell house, a three cell house, so representing your planar, your TLC and your MLC, different versions of NAND. But once you go vertical, you can cram more capacity onto a single chip. So that's yep. obviously very important for pushing forward capacities in smaller form factors like ultrabooks, like mobile phones, like tablets. And I like this analogy because in that analogy of the tab lock, the lift is my tube, you see. So it goes perfectly full circle. There is, however, another aspect to it, which is that one way of increasing density in a chip, how do you go from it being 128 uh, megabytes to 256 megabytes, uh, for example, is you change the process, so you shrink it, what, so therefore your transistors are smaller, more transistors in the same space, and you're good, as Luke's also saying, you do also get different types of memory, uh, TLC, MLC, and such like. Um, however, shrinking the process has a downside to it. Uh, it has the upside, which is you can get more in the same space, as the upside, which is it should take less power, but the downside is its life expectancy is often reduced, um, which is when you get this business with... Um, uh, how many writes you can do to a particular piece of flash. So Samsung, they're very cagey about the process they use in some of their chips. They talk about 1x nanometer and 2x nanometer. Um, the suggestion is that 1x is actually 19 and 2x is 20 something, but we're not quite sure what. It definitely suggests they're behind the curve compared to other manufacturers, um, Intel Micron being the obvious uh, candidate. But the 3D thing uh, is, it strikes me as it's Samsung's way, apart from saying we can go a different route, is also saying actually the process isn't quite so important um, because we can stack them up. So the fact we haven't shrunk it down to get more in there, that's because we have more anyway. Um, so three sides to a coin in there. I yeah, think. I think the important thing there is um, so we've typically seen TLCs being used for higher densities so you can get higher capacities inside the same form factor so you can have your one terabyte M SATA drive rather than being limited to mm. 512 gigabytes, for example. Um, the important thing there, though, is TLC is typically a lower uh, durability cycle than MLC. So typically, sometimes, the, the number being quoted is about 1,000 cycles for TLC versus about 3,000 mm. cycles for MLC. Um, with 3D NAND, the important thing is you can stack the memory. So if you stack multiple MLC layers, you can still achieve those capacity mm. goals. So you can get uh, three and a half terabyte gum stick form factor, yes. people, which is, as far as I tell, M2, uh, one of the M2 variants. Uh, yes. But you can use the durability of MLC, so you're not necessarily trading as much as you were perhaps beforehand. And now if we segue smoothly into the next aspect, the, the business of interfaces and uh, technologies for SSDs. So M.2 is a form factor. M2 is a form factor, yeah. It and it's the width, it's that 22 mm width, but it can be different lengths. So some yeah. of them are like a chip and some of them are, as you say, gums like a piece of Wrigley's. Uh, other gum is available. Yeah, the most common. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and it can be single-sided or dual-sided yeah. as well. 
Um, I mean, I've sometimes mistaken an M.2 SAT, um, uh, M.2 uh, SSD for a Wi-Fi card. <laughs> it hasn't got the antenna clips, but there's, there's uh, oh, wrong one. Um, however, we're moving on to what is going to be the um, interconnect or interface for uh, SSDs from now on or in the future? Well, we saw last year around the time the Z97 platform launched, it was an interesting time because we had M2 and SATA Express, so they were the two different interface methods but for uh, capable of carrying PCIe lanes for storage, so obviously higher <coughs> speed, you go from 6 gigabits per second to 10 gigabits per second. Um, wind the clock forward a few months to now, and we've seen that SATA Express hasn't really taken on. No. So as far as we can... Fact, I've even, you've seen it. I mean, you've, you've worked with it, you've done I've, it I've, I've, I've not even seen it. Yeah, I, we, did, we did the article um, around about the release time, so around about this time last year, actually about mm. March, April last year, and one of the main comments was the connector is just it's cumbersome, it's too mm. bulky, you've got uh, two SATA connectors plus an additional lane carrying connector bundled together. So as far as that war goes, MTOP2 seems to be winning out, and I think that will be the form factor that takes us forward. But we've also got competition from standard PCIe form factors. So for example, your PCI Express, your X4 lanes, your X2 lanes, mm -hmm. just sticking into your, your slot that you'd otherwise stick an extra graphics card or a Wi-Fi card or a RAID card in. Um, they're effectively the same thing, just one is a different form factor. So they still get the lanes from either the chipset or the CPU. Mm -hmm. They'll still offer the same speed, there's just different in regards to the physical size, so how, much, uh, how many memory chips you can actually cram on the PCB. Well, indeed. Um, we're, we're in this sort of uh, position where certainly enthusiasts are booting off SSD, but you have to be uh, something special to actually be running purely an SSD. I mean, my personal PC has an SSD and two hard drives. Um, I think I've got something like seven terabytes yeah. of hard drives. I think SSD only is probably fine for laptops, but mm. not necessarily a big terabyte Steam collection. No, quite. Um, and I would have said some months ago that um, one of the things that causes me uh, to pause the thought is that the SSD failure mode can be sudden and catastrophic. Um, whereas hard drives, you hope you're going to get a bit of a sort of hint there's something going wrong. Mm. However, I've had exactly that when I wake up one morning and a hard drive just isn't there. So um, in that sense, all bets are off. So I'm going to just put, put this out there. As far as I'm concerned, if the industry can keep developing, this is great. Higher capacities, lower costs, I'm all for this. I personally would like a failure mode for everything which fails to read only. So basically, well, unless of course it goes, you, know, you fritz it with electric. I mean, if you, if you nuke it, then, then it's dead. But when a thing just decides to up and die for no apparent reason, and I can't even read the blooming thing, uh, that's yeah, a I, very bad weekend. I, I think that's an interesting point, yeah. So obviously SSD is still relatively new technology as far as the consumer scene goes. We're still mm. within, uh, well, within the, the first decade of SSD technology and widespread adoption. Hard drives have been around for decades mm. and we know how they work, we know how they fail, we know to listen for <laughs> noises and listen for slow in performance and read the different uh, modes. So I think that is important, it's a method of perhaps saving your data in event of a catastrophic failure, so we can just postpone the catastrophic <laughs> failure. <laughs> I know yes. some of the... Put it off for 30 or 40 years, for example. Yeah, yeah that, that would be ideal. I know some of the professional drives do have modes where they can do that, and some of Intel's drives have, have mm. modes where they can do that, but more widespread oh, yes, adoption sure. yeah, would yeah, be yeah, ideal. Yes. Although it does depend on what the failure is. I mean, if it's a power failure, as we know, that that's relatively easy to get around. Basically, it involves a battery, um, but, uh, or, or a UPS if they're going to get really flash and grand. But... Um, but when the thing actually fails internally for reasons, I mean, I've been doing this thing, as you know, with the um, uh, OCs and mm -hmm. R100 SSDs, uh, five of them. The fifth one, by the way, is still running. Uh, it, the, the, spread, the, the spread of the five failures is just now getting silly. Um, I'm not going to give any numbers because we still have this guess that when it's going to die, although I'm starting to be thinking you should be guess which year it's going to die. But um, in each case... Uh, I had some inkling when, they, when some of the drives are going to go because the system would suddenly start misbehaving, I had to reboot it, oh look, a drive's gone missing. But um, when they're gone, they're gone. I mean, they're, they're, I'm not using these drives for anything, well anything, I'm just running a benchmark on them, so there's nothing on them I want. But, uh, and, they're, and they're past 100% life by yes. <laughs> a massive margin. So it's not a fair test in a sense. But when they go, they just, they just evaporate. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have to be careful there though, because that is the really extreme end of the spectrum. Yes. You ran, what, 400 and something terabytes? Yeah, 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 hundreds and hundreds of terabytes, and then the, the warranty limit was 20. Yeah. So we, we are 20 times and more past their warranty limit. So uh, in that sense, I think you can't put anything on them. But, but yeah. when they go, they've gone, 
and there's there's nothing left. Yeah, it's... I think for every day you should. I, I still trust SSDs. I, I stand by SSDs. I've never had a failure. To ah, fingers this, crossed. This is my fingers crossed and touch wood. But a very I, I do stand by them, especially in a laptop environment where you're going to be perhaps bumping it about, sticking in your rucksack. That mm. fact that it doesn't have any moving parts, no mechanical items to actually fail, that does give me a breath of confidence over yes. previous iterations of the technology. Although you do get the joys of how on earth do you back up even now when an SSD is 240 or 512 gigabyte or whatever, like, how on earth do you back up a thing that size? You know? Yeah, you do have to uh, yeah. limit yourself with certain collections on your laptop, yes. Very true, very true. Um, what have we discussed this time then? Where have we been? We've been with 3, 3D NAND, that was it. Um, 3D NAND, it, it, it's not a coming thing, it's a here thing. It is being done by Samsung in their current crop of SSDs, and Intel and Micron uh, are clearly going to be going down yeah, the same as well as uh, Quite clearly, it's something they're introducing uh, as well as everything else. It's, it's a thing alongside other things. It's not, I don't think it's taking over, is it? Not yet. It won't no. be taking over yet. No, it'll be alongside for a few generations, as far as I can tell. 